Hi Nathan, thank you so much for joining us today. So how do you feel since Wrapping Disconnected? Look, it's been good. You know, 2022 was exciting. It was a jam-packed year. Uh, I, I, I felt it was imperative to kind of shoot and try to wrap the film in that year. Mm. Uh, try not to let things drag too much just because I'm tr spinning a lot of plates. But yeah, look, we, we did the first half of the movie um, around about Easter. Mm -hmm. And then the second block probably by end of November. So that was great to wrap. Obviously, they'll be going into post-production now. Mm. Uh, that was coinciding with me shooting my 11th feature film. Oh my God, 11th. Which, is, which, yeah, which I'm halfway in now. Congrats. Thank you. Wow. <laughs> which is insane. Yeah. Um, and that's going really well, and that's a kind of new genre, something I haven't tackled before. It's sci-fi, which is mm. interesting. Uh, and uh, then I had the premiere for Lady Terror, my 10th film, which was in, I think, first week of December. Mm -hmm. That was at Cinema Nova for Monster Fest, and that was a sellout, so I couldn't Whoa. be happier. How did it feel to see your film get premiered in such an amazing place in, in Melbourne? Really good and it was great because it took a bit of pressure off because normally like when I finish the movie and I might do a cast and crew screening yeah. and then put on the show myself, it can also be very expensive. <laughs> so, you know, actually getting into a major festival, letting them kind of, I guess, do most of the work mm. uh, as far as the publicity goes. And, you know, it was an amazing festival, this one gone, where, I mean, Sigrid Thornton was there. You know, she had Whoa. a film that I think won... Huh. Uh, on the uh, on the closing night, mm. uh, and you know some really really top notch um, you know international filmmakers were there, so it was good to be, I guess a um, a, a small part of the of the Melbourne lo or local filmmakers in what is now for them pretty much an international film festival. Wow, you must have had such a historic year in like your personal career over 2022. Do you have any big goals for 2023? It's a really good way to put it because you're right, you know, capping the 10th feature was a big goal. Yeah. And also being able to still act in other films and create the next, it's, it's incredible. Oh, my God. Uh, yeah, 23, I'm really excited about it. I think a lot of it will be post-production. Mm -hmm. um, Disconnected's in post. I'm still shooting the 11th. Uh, Lady Terror I will release. Mm. But, you know, there's other, there's other um, physical media and other titles and some re-release stuff I've got going on on the side. So I guess I'm one of those guys I'm always spinning plates. <laughs> I'm yeah. just getting stressed listening to you talk about <laughs> it. You, you seem so cool, like so grounded about it. What's mm. your secret, I guess, to staying on top? It's a good question, but I think really it's just uh, uh, having done it for so long. Mm. I think, you know, when it's like anything when you're doing it you know, uh, forever, it becomes, it does become somewhat easier. Mm -hmm. It just becomes part of your lifestyle. Also, you know, I don't have children, you know, <laughs> so I'm not, I'm not, you know, sort of bound to, to these other extra responsibilities. I've mm. chosen a particular life and a path that, uh, that uh, I guess is somewhat um, uh, a dream come true. Yeah. You know? And doing what I, what I was, was born to do and doing what I love. And I've chosen to do that. And I just think it's like, you know, being a rock, the longer you stay with, you know, at anything, the, the easier and better you get. Hmm, that's such an interesting way to put it. Hmm. What would you say your favourite project over 2022 was? Hmm, favourite project. I know you can't think of favourite child, but... Uh. Yeah. There were moments and disconnected in the first block that were very memorable and very satisfying. Mm. Uh, also being able to sort of, you know, pass the torch and uh, being directed by Dear Taylor, that was uh, exciting and and uh, because there's a lot of trust there. Mm. Uh, I guess um, over the years I've made a lot of films myself because I'm a little bit of a control freak and <laughs> I have a certain vision, yeah. whether I'm producing or writing or acting or directing, you know, I have a very specific style. So mm. it was nice to sort of, you know, pass the torch and, and also uh, relinquish a bit and have someone else um, take the reins and being able to indulge more in, in the acting side of it. Mm, that's so good. It's so nice having like someone that you trust. And mm. yeah, you just, yeah. Um, I must ask, what's been your favorite onset moment this year? Well, on obviously set. 2023. So, oh, do yeah. you mean uh, last, year? <laughs> last year? Last <laughs> year, I yes. shot this year? I probably, actually, I probably have already shot this year. Yeah. Um, well, yeah, I can tell you right now, I, I have already shot a scene this year. Oh my God, and, on uh, fire. Yeah, and it was great. And uh, look, I don't want to blow my own trumpet, but I do have an actor friend that was on set that said to me, kind of mm. whispered in my ear and said, you know, you're a heavyweight now. You can do whatever you want. Amazing. Does, you, know, you don't have to try so much. Mm. You know, um, Beautiful compliment. I don't see myself like that, but I think that um, I'm getting to a stage where I understand the process so well that I can, that I can enjoy it. Because mm. as you said, you know, this can be stressful, even just thinking about all these responsibilities. Yeah, for sure. But when you kind of get to that level where you can relinquish a bit and let the universe respond, mm. it, uh, it's very enjoyable. 
Oh, that's so yeah. cool to hear your mindset <laughs> on that. Would you then consider, I want to, I'm very interested in this. Do you believe in fate or everything happens for a reason? Like, what do you believe? Like, what's your belief system around your career and I everything? I think that, like, if we're talking about human beings, I think we've all got a certain path laid out before that we have to walk. Mm -hmm. And I think that it's your decisions that you make that ultimately kind of place you where you end up. Mm -hmm. um, you know, there's a movie I love called Run While the Run, where, yes. you know, where she gets to a T intersection. If she goes left, life will go this way. If she turns right, life will go that way. Mm -hmm. And sometimes it's like that. I think you know when you get to a T intersection and you have to make the choice for yourself. Mm. I think it's more about you being comfortable with the choices you make. Mm. So, but yeah, definitely hard work. You, you can't deny that hard work is the only thing that's going to get you where you need to go mm. because I've quite often had a lot of sacrifice because people say oh you've got all these movies you know mm. you must be so lucky and I mean I say, 11 wow. movies yeah but still you know you've got to see the work behind the scenes and you know there's been many nights when maybe I wanted to go out and party or do something my friends were doing I'll go on a holiday and I haven't and I've decided mm. to sacrifice that time and actually put it back into the art mm. so I guess really what I'm trying to say is you really will get out what you put in mm. you know is that the advice you'd give to upcoming filmmakers, upcoming actors, upcoming creatives? My advice would be don't listen to too much to other people's opinions if your self-belief about something is that serious. Mm. Like if you wake up in the morning and you're kind of, the first images that come into your head are about your project, mm. you have to pursue it. Yeah. You know, and then and in any which way you can. My only advice to other filmmakers is, is use what you've got mm. because quite often you spend a lot of time trying to sort of reach this plateau or perhaps it's trying to get an actor that you can't quite get or mm. maybe there's a scheduling issue. Just use what you've got to your advantage and also surround yourself with people that are at your level mm. and, and bump up slowly. Yeah. yeah. Is that advice taken from your years like of experience or do you have someone that you uh, aspire to be? I think that I have heroes in my childhood that I aspired to be, but then when mm. I became a man at whatever age that was, <laughs> it became more about who I want to be. Mm -hmm. um, but I think, sorry, what was the question again? <laughs> Do you uh, mm. aspire to be like mm. it, heroes, for instance? Like, mm. is there anybody mm. that you've looked up to over the years? Mm. Yeah, I think it's really healthy to, you know, particularly for young men to have heroes. Mm. I mean, you definitely want to try and walk the path that's been walked before, but give it your kind of stamp or something. Mm. Um, yeah, just got to listen to your own intuitions and kind of, you know, follow, follow your inner voice, really, mm. I think. Yeah. Yeah. Is talking about people that you aspired to be, to meet, is there anyone on your checklist, I guess, of mm. actors, local talent that you're mm. just dying, dying mm. to work with? I mean, I kind of, you know, exist in the kind of independent film realm, which I love. Mm. And I love, I love discovering people and I love seeing people kind of blossom and also pop. And, uh, and I've been doing that for a long time. I'm pretty satisfied at the moment, I'll be honest with you, Amelia. <laughs> like there's, you know, I've worked with just about everyone that I want to work with on the local scene. Mm. So uh, th there's, n there's no one popping into my head right now that, uh, that I like, th like the checklist is pretty, it's in pretty good shape. Let's yeah. put it that way at the moment. Okay. Yeah. Well, let's say we were to broaden it. <laughs> let's say just top three yeah. people that you'd want to work Actors with. Actors or Either or creatives, yeah. yeah. I mean, I'm still pretty big on Tarantino. Yeah. I haven't met him in the flesh. I have friends that have met him and friends that have worked with him, but mm. I haven't shaken his hand. That's someone yes. I'd like to meet. Mm. Um, actors, hmm. A lot of the actors that I grew up watching, they're kind of retiring now or they're kind of, you know, getting out of the game. It's sort of, I don't have an actor's checklist as such. Mm -hmm. I'm probably more the guy that likes to discover new talent. And I mean, I remember even way back in film school that my actual teachers, they mm. were really good filmmakers and I used to wonder why they were there. Sometimes, <laughs> you know, used to say, why, why aren't you guys making your own films? Yeah. And then I kind of realised, because I had this conversation with my, my, my one of my teachers and he said that, what he enjoyed was seeing that person mm. make their first film and kind of embellish and relish from it and have and, and discover who they were, mm. you know, because you'd have to do everything, you know, you'd have to camera, crew, yeah. sound, act, direct, figure yourself out. And he loved the process of seeing that person figure out who they were. Mm. So I guess I'm, there's a little bit of that in me. 
you know, because yeah. when you do indie film, you f people are figuring out who they are and what they want to do, and that's exciting. Mm. Yeah. And it's different to when you are on a big budget and everything's set in stone and mm. you are adhering to executive producers and money's on the line. It's a lot stricter. Mm. There's not as much freedom. Yeah. And sometimes it's not as much fun. Mm. So I think it comes down to how much control you want over your own production. Yeah, mm. that's very true.